that the person remains in faith. Not in his omnipotence, not in his omniscience, not in his what? Knowledge, nothing. He's talking about the oneness of purpose in seeing that the believer remains in faith. Hey, what's up, everybody? Welcome back to the channel. It's your boy, Jesse Keegan. So, uh, I want to thank everybody who's been subscribing to the channel. Really, really, turn me man. And I want to thank the people who are out there and uh, they've been able to give us a reaction video, man. You're the real MVP, man. Thank you, thank you so much. So, right about now, <clears throat> a lot of people suggested that we should. A lot of people suggested that uh, we should go react to this video right here, and this one, and this video is uh, the dad at his best part eight. We did like from part one to seven or something like that, and recently we also did part ten. And the feedback was really amazing, and people actually suggested that we should go more, like we should do more of the dad videos and stuff like that. And we were like, okay, yeah, fine, we're gonna do more of those videos. So without any wasting time, guys, this video was suggested by a lot of people. So. Let's get it, let's get it, let's see what the dad has to say on part 8. So without any further ado guys, let's get it. Uh, Mr. Dida, yesterday you said it was different between numbers and uh, uh, Jesus said that me and the Father, we are one. Is the first I will say. And uh, today you said that you respect Jesus, you love Jesus and you believe what he said. And uh, I want, please Mr. Stanley, if you can read one word from the Bible. I think it's Johannes 16. Ingen kan komma till fadern utom genom mig. No one can come to the Father except through me. This is what Jesus said. Yes, I wanted, you wanted to know what Jesus had said and I will tell you that. Your question, please. Uh, I will repeat what I understood. That uh, with regards to the divinity of Christ, that Jesus is God. I was asking the pastor to give me an unequivocal, unambiguous statement by Jesus that I am God, worship me. And thank God he didn't succeed. But now the lady, very fairly, she's asking a question, if I understood it correctly, that Jesus did say, I and my father are one. That was the first statement. Was it? Where's the lady? She's, I and my father are one. Now, it implies that if he is one with God, then he is God. That is what it sees, seen on the face of it. I says, you know, sister or pastor, this quotation is in John chapter 10 verse 30. 10 30. Where Jesus says, I and my father are one. He said that. I am asking, what is the context? And believe me, I have asked DDs and priests and reverends and pastors and predicants. I am asking, what is the context? Meaning, in what sense did he say that? And in the past 40 years, I haven't come across a single learned Christian who without opening the book can give me the context. He has not been able to give yet. What is the context? So if you see it in the context, it's not what you're thinking. In the context, we must see verses, not take them out from the context and say, look, the man said this. In what sense did he say? What was he trying to explain? So in the context, as it started with John 23, 10, 23, and you read there, it says, and Jesus walked in Solomon's porch, meaning in the temple of Jerusalem. Then came the Jews round about him, meaning they surrounded him, and said, brandishing a finger in his face, How long does thou make us to doubt? If, the, if thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. Insinuating, alleging that he's talking ambiguously. If thou be the Christ, tell us plainly. So Jesus says, I told you, and ye believe not. The works that I do in my Father's name, they bear witness of me. My sheep hear my voice, and I know them, and they follow me, and I give unto them eternal life, and they shall never perish. My Father which gave them me is greater than all, and no man is able to pluck them out of my Father's hand. Neither, was that was verse 28, verse 29, neither shall any man pluck them out of my hand. 
I and my father are one. This is the context. In other words, if once a person accepts faith, God sees to it that the person remains in faith, and I as a teacher, as a master, as a, uh, uh, I see to it that the person remains in faith, we are one in this, to see that the person remains in faith. Not in his omnipotence, not in his omniscience, not in his what? Knowledge, nothing. He's talking about the oneness of purpose in seeing that the believer remains in faith. But the Jews were looking for trouble. And when you are looking for trouble, you find it around the corner. You don't have to go very far. So the Jews, verse 31, the Jews picked up stones again to stone him. So Jesus says, many good works have I showed you from my father. For which of those works do you stone me? So they say, for a good work we stone thee not, but for blasphemy. Kufar. Because that thou being a man, makest thyself a God. That is the charge. That you are now claiming divinity. For that you deserve death, according to the law of the Jews. What does Jesus say to that? If he was God, he has an opportunity. I said, look, if I am God, what else can I say? He asked me, are you Muslim? I, I said, look, I am a Muslim. I have to say, I am a Muslim. I don't know what you're going to do with that now. What are you going to do to me? But you say, are you a Muslim? I say, I am a Muslim. If Jesus is God, then he should say, if I am God, what else can I say? But he didn't say anything like that. He said, is it not written in your law? He's sarcastic. The law means the Torah, the first five books of Moses, Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, and Deuteronomy. Is it not written in your law, I said, ye are gods. In other words, he's quoting from the 82nd Psalm, the pastor has already made reference to it. From the 82nd Psalm, he said, I said, ye are gods. It's a quotation. If he, God Almighty, called them gods, unto whom the word of God came, means the prophets are called gods in our scripture. This is our language. This is how we talk. Like in a court of law, in an English court, they say, me lord, me lord, who? Like in a court of law, in an English court, they say, me lord, me lord, who? The magistrate, the judge. He say, me lord, me lord, my lord, my lord, is he your lord, is he your god? No, no, this is your language. You talk like that out of the sense, me lord, me lord, means my lord, my lord. You don't mean god. That's your language. In South Africa, the word for God is here, hot, and here, the Lord, here, ek, ek is the here, I, I am God. And you go to Cape Town, or any other place in the cities, and you find there, it says there, signs, when you go to the toilets, it says, Dharma, here, Dama means days, ladies, and here means men, gentlemen. But at one stage I didn't know that here means gentlemen. I had learned it from the Bible that here means God, Lord. So I'm seeing Dama, I guess it must be days, ladies. But here. <laughs> Toilet for gods in South Africa? Toilet for gods? No, there are no toilets for gods. Gods don't go to toilets. But this is the language. So Jesus is telling, look, in our language, people are called gods, and you find no fault with that. Why are you finding fault with me when I say, I'm the son of God, which is a lesser expression than calling a person a god. Moses is called a god. The devil is called a god in the Bible. And the Jews are called gods, that ye are the ch children of God and the children of the Most High. Ye are gods and the children of the Most High, 82nd Psalm. So in other words, this is our language. We talk like that. The godly person, we say he's a god. He doesn't mean god, he's a godly. God, instead of saying godly, he's a god. This is our language. Why are you trying to find fault with me? No, there is no, no idea there but conveyed by Jesus when he said, I am my father one, meaning he is God. Thank you, sir. Then about that other verse, Jesus says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man come unto the Father but by me. That was the second one. Ah, he says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. He says, I accept that. You see, Jesus Christ, what you, when you read that, I think it's John chapter 14, 
Start from verse chapter 13 and you read there and each and every expression the Jews misunderstood. Everything the disciples misunderstood. Jesus is telling them that I'm going to prepare a place for you. In my father's house there are many mentions. If it was not so I would have told you. And whither I go ye know. You know where I'm going and the way ye know. They say Lord we know not whither thou goest and how can we know the way. They misunderstood. They misunderstood. Jesus is talking about God and about spiritual matters and they think of geographical locations. What? Stockholm, Oslo. <laughs> What's that? He's thinking about geographical places. He's talking about spiritual matters. So they said, look, we don't know and how do we know the way? Misunderstood. So he said, look, I am the way, the truth and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me. It was too heavy for them. That was too heavy for them. So they say again, Philip butts in. He said, look, all this what you are talking is too heavy for us. We don't know what you're talking about. You're talking over our heads. Just show us the Father and it suffices at us. Show us God. That will give us satisfaction enough. So Jesus says, Philip, you have been with me for so long. Why ask us thou show us the Father? If you have seen me, you have seen the Father. And they misunderstood again. It's a continuous series of misconceptions. So Jesus is telling them, ye of little faith, ye of little faith, how many times? And he explains to them, as I'm explaining to you now, like to little children, and they can't understand. So he said, are you even yet without understanding? And when he spoke further, he said, oh, faithless and perverse generation, telling his disciples, oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I be with you? I'm saying that if he was a Japanese instead of a Jew, he would have committed the honorable harakiri, suicide. Wow. Wow, 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 wow. <clears throat> Such an amazing um, video right there. I think uh, Amedidat was giving out some good points up there. Um, first of all, it comes to the issue of the language, you get it. Um, if, we, if we look at the Bible in uh, probably the early stages of it being uh, uh, being uh, what do you call this like introduced to the world. I don't think it was put up into uh, in English or something like that probably Those language and that language was probably let's say Hebrew or something like that and that language um, There were no ambiguity in probably one word or context and eat and whatnot you get it Maybe one word meant one word you get it so I mean, down the line, when now I think King James came in and, started and gave us the King James version, I think things started changing because it was more in English. And English is a language that you find a lot of ambiguity in. Like, there's so much meaning in one word. You get it. So, anybody can interpret the Bible on its own uh, measures or on its own uh, terms. You get it. So, I think that's where the confusion comes from. What the dad was trying to say was that uh, Jesus never said by himself that he is God and you people should worship him. I think this is, a, this is a high time that Christians should accept the fact that Jesus didn't say that. You get it? And uh, I feel that also English has a major role when it comes to um, the religion or when it comes to religious matters. You get it? Because I think English changes every time. It changes every day. It changes every season. Tomorrow you'll, you'll come up with a new language. Sorry. Tomorrow you'll come up with a new word. A new word will mean something else. You get it. So I mean, um, why can't we have a language that doesn't change? A language that is just fixated with one particular um, meaning and let it just be like that. You get it. Like for example, the Muslims, you know, Allah doesn't, it means God. You get it. Uh, in English, when we talk about God, there is the God with the small g and there is God with the big g. So which kind of God are you talking about? Now when you say, like I'm talking to you and I say I believe in God, what kind of God are you talking about? You get it? So that's where the confusion is. I mean, maybe if you go and emphasize more, you say like I'm talking, I'm talking to the God, 
probably that would make sense that would make people believe that you're talking to that one god but if you just say like i'm worshiping god uh, i mean there is so much not unless you put it into uh paper and then you clarify that this is the god that i'm talking about the god the god with the double g i think the problem is the uppercase and the lower cases who came up with this language anyway but anyway did that really answer it in a very 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 smartest way and i really really liked how put things together and everything he explained was just amazing super amazing such an amazing guy such a brilliant guy now um, another thing is that um, I was kind of uh, trying to do research and I, I stumbled upon a research and it says that the Bible was revised 11 times like 11 times the Bible was revised 11 times that makes you think about it like there's a lot of misconception about things that we see today there's a lot of confusion literally people are confused on what to you know what to listen what to follow and what to actually uh, internalize in their mind or understand because you go to this point it says this and the other side it says that but now who are we to blame are we blaming should we blame ourselves or should we blame the people who actually uh, started altering the bible or altering the religious books and stuff like that anywho um did that actually explain things very well and it's well ex explanatory through him that he was able to uh, answer the questions and i believe that the confucius comes in with the language just as he was saying the language is the problem here. It's the language that we choose to use the one that is confusing our people. They get it. Because we choose to use English and English is a is a language with a lot of confusion. They get it. Like you can play around with English and I mean there's so much in there. Anyway guys, if you feel like I reacted to this video in a better way, just give me a thumbs up and don't forget to go down my comment section and tell me exactly what you feel about our reaction. What do you feel about my reaction? What do you feel about this video right here? I mean, did that at its best part eight? You talked about a lot of things. Just let me know in the comment section. What is it that you grasped on the reaction or on this video? Just let me know. Just let me know. And if you have any kind of reaction videos, don't hesitate. Just let me know, and I'm gonna do it for you anytime, anywhere. And I'm glad enough to you know keep on reacting to these videos. It, it really opens up your mind. It really opens up your opens up your thoughts you get it like it's something that you have to sit down and think about it and it's such an amazing time to live in and yeah so and the most important thing guys don't forget to subscribe to our channel the more you keep on subscribing the more you give us the motivation to do a lot of videos and to give you a better better content and last but not the least i'm going to see you in the next video and peace out